Hey guys, Barking Madly here. I was talking to some folks about uh, brewing mead and stuff like that, and the question was asked, well, what, you know, what, what recipe did I follow and all that, so, and what method did I use? So I figured actually, it might actually be just easier just to walk everybody through it, and hell, if somebody learns something, then fantastic. Um, just so you know, I used a book called Making Wild Wines and Meads by Vargas and Gillick, uh, Gullick. I can't find the book offhand, so, I'm, but I took notes on what I did. Anyway, the ingredients were three pounds of organic honey, acid blend, uh, pectic enzymes, da, 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 da. Uh, wine tannin, yeast nutrient, I used a special yeast, and uh, used, one, used a half a cup of water, and just basically blended it all together. Uh, if you've never made a beer or wine before, basically you're going to end up with something called a primary fermenter. It can be as simple as this, like it's one gallon versus a two gallon bucket. Um, if you remember some of, from some of my earlier videos, I showed just some stuff bubbling. And this is what's called an air trap. You put water in here and then what happens is as the fermentation happens, CO2 bubbles through here and it keeps air and contaminants from getting back into it. Anyways, first thing you have to do with everything is you um, sanitize it. This is iodine, you can use bleach, but depending on the, you know, there's methods to do it. You sanitize everything you want, you're going to use, it's going to come in contact with it because you don't want it to, uh, uh, you don't want any contaminants, yeast, molds, or anything like that from the atmosphere. Uh, you can, sometimes you can boil your honey, I did it just to make sure. Uh, sometimes you don't have to. Um, and that same goes for making any of your wines. I chose organic orange blossom honey. Um, still not entirely sure that was the right thing to go. But anyways, you mix all this stuff together and you follow the instructions. And within about an hour or two, you have what they call pitching your yeast. You will have a, uh, it'll start bubbling and you've got fermentation going on. It'll sit in here, your primary fermentation, until basically you've got as much alcohol as you want. And you can do something called, you can measure the, uh, the specific gravity of it. It's basically a density of it. And when I did that, to start off with, theoretically I had a maximum amount of 14% alcohol. And the, the yeast I use is actually can go up to 15 or 16 percent, and based on those numbers, that just tells you that I'll probably end up with a bit of a dry, a dry um, mead when I was done. So I then put in a fourth pound of uh, honey into it. Yeah, um, like I said in the 1 p.m., I had mentioned one pound of honey. No, it was four pounds of honey is what I ended up using. And then after you, after your, what they call the primary fermentation is done, you use a siphon, and you transfer. The, the liquid into a secondary can canister. Generally, you want it to be glass. And I believe I showed you guys some uh, video of that as well, where, again, had this little uh, air trap uh, or airlock inside of here. And I let that go until everything basically stopped. Now, the transfer of doing that is something they call racking, like a, uh, a bookshelf or a rack or something like that. And basically, it's just trying to get all the liquid you can out with, while leaving the solids behind. And uh, let's see, I started this whole thing, I believe it was, oh geez, don't even have the dates down here. Roughly, I think it was uh, March 3rd, no, oh pardon me, no, good grief. February 4th is when I started this whole thing. And it was back on March 13th is when I actually stopped. Anyway. Uh, the mead I made, I showed you I made both a honey mead, which is just plain old mead, and uh, another one called Acer Glen. The Acer Glen didn't come out all that good. The honey mead, it, it's, it's okay. Um, looks fantastic. Um, I mean, it looks awesome. Perfectly clear. Slightly sweet. It's good, but a little bit bland. I was expecting some more subtle flavors on it, and uh, don't really know what it's supposed to have and what it's not. Uh, one thing I, I'm still trying to consider is, do I want to use the orange juice at the beginning? Because it does have a fairly citrusy flavor. Now that could be because I used orange, you know, partially because I used orange blossom honey, and then to top it off because I used the orange juice. I don't know, it's not... Eh. I'm not sure yet. The, the longer it's actually, it's funny, the longer it ages, the better it's getting. Um, you can taste it that, yep, it has alcohol in it. 
And like I said, it's a bit of a sweet wine. I wouldn't call it so sweet to be a dessert wine. Um, but you can see it's climbing the wall, so it's, it's got a pretty good dose. I'd probably guess it at 12 to 14 percent alcohol. Um, I haven't sent it out, but it came out really nice. Like I said, the Acer Glen, the uh, Maple Mead, that one came out kind of funky. Not super thrilled with it. Um, but part of the problem is I've never had mead. I've been wanting to find places that have it. And even here in Southern California, where you can pretty much find everything, I haven't been able to. So my first time of having mead was the one I was drinking this. But um, I will say, if you start brewing wine or brewing honey, or mead, I should say, don't make your first judgments um, as the stuff is brewing. Because when I was going through and we first started to get a clear liquid out of it, the maple mead actually was tasting a lot better. But over time, it kind of got a little, I mean, it's still drinkable. I mean, it's not, I won't call it bad. I mean, it's dr definitely drinkable if you wanted to get a buzz. It's no worse than drinking like Altus or some other cheap beer, but it's not something you'd sit there and go, wow, I really want a glass of that. This one is something you go, yeah, this is pretty good. You know, like a table wine kind of thing. But uh, like I said, the maple actually was tasting a lot better during the fermentation process, and the honey had just some really strong notes to it. And uh, afterwards, now it's gotten a lot better. I mean, it's gone from being okay to, I'd say, you know, moderately good. But uh, you really have to wait till it sits for a while. Now, one thing I don't think I mentioned is when you're doing the primary fermentation and the secondary fermentation and storage, the fermentation, you want this to be sitting at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 22 degrees Celsius. Um, I'm storing this refrigerated just because it seems to taste a little bit better refrigerated. But at any rate, uh, if anybody has any questions about it, I'll be happy to, you know, put up any notes or any comments or anything like that. Like I said, it, it's tasty. Um, I don't know whether, the, you know, that's this is a three-quarter gallon jug. I don't know whether the, the, uh, the effort and all that was worth for that little bit of wine, but uh, I didn't really feel like making five gallons of it and ending up with five gallons of something I didn't like. But uh, at any rate, there you go.